Fratfin Radio, this is Chiara Nicoletti from the 40th Torino Film Festival. I'm honored to be with Maria Shred, the director of She Said, Anche Io, in Italian. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. So I have to say that um, I was reading the, the press notes, you know, and there was um, written that obviously for the, the, the journalist, uh, mm, uh, placing their trust in you and, uh, and the film was a, a great uh, leap of faith. So I was wondering, I want to ask you, what kind of challenge and opportunity was for you this film? This is the film. You know? <laughs> yeah, no pressure at all. No pressure right? <laughs> at all. Exactly, that's what I thought. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's you know this article when the article came out and what it what what happened in the wake of it meant a lot to me. You know, um, and it's of course a true story on so many levels. That is very different than working on, you know, a pure fictional film. Yes. It's, uh, it's a great responsibility on all of our shoulders, and we all felt that. But it's also fantastic to be able to bring the story to the screen. And, uh, and we were very lucky because we had so many people uh, working with us and giving us information, and foremost... Jody Cantor and Megan Thuy yeah. themselves, right? Also, the New York Times was a great supporter. So we wanted to get it right and uh, portray these two women who are extraordinary, I think, their witnesses, but also their workplace with accuracy. I have to say that they often talk about us women, you know, telling us that we are strong, we're superheroes, and... Um, and this film showing women's ability to fight, fall, get up again, you know? I, I really believe it as a woman and as a mother that we are really that strong. So how did you work in making this story uh, about women and journalists, of course, and not only about an investigation? Yeah, you know, this is term... A yeah. strong woman. Yeah, it's, it's, it's troubling. I don't like this, you know, because it implies that women generally are weak. And then there are some of them that are really strong. So just let's, let's not use it any longer. And I think the beauty, the possibility in this movie was to show in the center two women who are very good at what they do. They're really professionals. Otherwise, they wouldn't be working in the New York Times. And at the same time, you know, they struggle with things. Every working mother struggles, for instance. They're taking the subway. They're late for their appointments. You know, they, they have yeah. sleepless nights. And, and I think it's important to, to paint the full picture of there are we all have different sides we are vulnerable we are full of doubts we are full of joy we are full of strength i totally agree totally totally agree and that i have to say that speaking of uh, the woman's side and the journalistic side there's a i i am i'm still thinking about uh, a moment in which there's carrie mulligan's face uh, while she's uh, like in the in the meeting that she's having with Weinstein and he's basically attacking her. We cannot hear it, but we know. And there's a strange calm in her face. Like, and that was for me the face of someone that that knows that she she did all she could to to solve this, to 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 uh, take this story out. And so that the, the calm of the person that is okay. So. Um, I was wondering, how did you work in depicting all these emotions, all the emotions that you talked uh, before, and blend it with, uh, with the whole the whole case, the whole story? Yeah, maybe. You know, we all experienced um, these variety of emotions through also our own experiences. I mm. think. Right, and um, I think Megan Thuy lived through a lot of sleepless nights, and she felt a big responsibility because she um, g 
gained the trust of a few women who shared their most intimate and devastating stories mm -hmm. and, and put their trust in the journalists to change something. So I think Megan Thuy was, and Jodi Kanta, they both were, you know, very nervous if they can finally publish this article. The moment when Harvey Weinstein unexpectedly visited the New York Times, it was clear he and his lawyers could not stop them any longer. And there is this calmness, which is which is a, a rare moment, I think. It's victory on one hand side, but it's also curiosity. And there's also some kind of sadness involved, I think, because he's truly not the only one. This investigation ignited the, the Me Too mo movement founded in 2006. And uh, from your work on this film and uh, on this investigation, what do you think that uh, you know, this, uh, this investigation uh, finally broke definitely that wall that, that had been so carefully built. I mean, what did it change? What the publishing changed? Yeah, yeah. Why do you think that that was that investigation? Oh. Besides, you know, the yes. strength and the, uh, the stubbornness of, the, of the, the two journalists. What do you think that? That was the final, you know. Well, talking to Jody and Megan at length, you know, I also understood that they had no idea that this article could cause this mm. kind of reactions. It it caught them by surprise. They had no idea, and uh, it was surprising to them. It was surprising to the New York Times. It was surprising to all of us, and I think there are explanations for it. I think, you know, there has been a great frustration within women for a long, long time, but then also with Trump becoming president, even though he was a predator himself, you know, he was, you know, there were people um, uh, speaking up against him about sexual harassment, and you know, at least half of the Americans did not seem to care. So, for some reason, and that might be one of it, you know, Harvey Weinstein kind of became, all of a sudden, like a representative figure of the powerful man in uh, and abusing his position. He became some kind of a symbol. One last thing, and I'll leave you, I promise. I, I was thinking, this is more a more general uh, question. After all the battles that have been fought in term, terms of real empowerment, do you think that women are really and finally reaching positions of power without the help right now of imposed rules, pink quotas, for example? Do you think that uh, we are really there? Or is something that we haven't achieved yet? I think we will only be there if a word like battle is, you know, um, shut out of mm -hmm. a mutual conversation between mm -hmm. men and women and all people. And mm -hmm. also, only in that moment where the word power and power position is also redefined. I think it's, we are not done with, mm -hmm. you know, just changing the game and and having now women becoming the same influential people, you know, sitting on powerful position and maybe even abusing their power in the same way. Yeah, it's one thing whole. that we have to free ourselves from, you know, being abused. But the other thing is also that we ask ourselves the question, how differently want we to, for instance, be on top of a hierarchy? What, differ what difference do we want to make? And I think there's a lot to do. We have to change the whole system and the words, the vocabulary, maybe. Yes. Thank you so much, Maria Schroeder, for <laughs> she said for talking to us at the 40th uh, Torino Film Festival. It was an honor. Thank you very much. It's an honor for me, too. And this is Chiara Nicoletti for Friday, the Festival Insider.